Hi, I'm Tony Kramer with RDO Equipment Company. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of the Agriculture Technology Podcast. Every day there are phenomenal advancements being made in the field of agriculture technology. RDO Equipment Company is a leader in agriculture equipment and precision agriculture technology and is here with industry experts bringing the latest news and information from RDO and John Deere. Welcome back to another episode of the podcast. This is episode number 157, and today we are going to be talking about GUS automation. Before we dive into the show, please take a moment to subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already. You can subscribe to the show on the many different podcasting apps that we're streaming this out to, such as Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, we've got it on Stitcher, Overcast, SoundCloud, as well as many others. While you're out there, drop us a review. We'd love to hear what you think about the show. Lastly, make sure to follow RDO Equipment Company on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and catch all of our latest videos on YouTube. You can also follow me on Twitter, at RDO Tony K. Now with that, let's get back to the show. I am very excited to welcome Gary Thompson, who is the COO of Gus Automation. Thanks for joining us on the show today, Gary. To get started, I'd really like to hear more about you and your background and how you got involved in the industry. Yeah, thanks a lot, Anthony. So thanks for having me on the show. Look forward to to chatting with you. And um, essentially, my background has always been in large-scale agriculture. Um, I grew up in Arizona on a family dairy farm, Uh, you know, fairly large size and just always out there working with the cattle. And eventually went to Cal Poly in San Luis Obispo for college. And after that, returned and uh, managed the dairy for 10 years. And um, the operation grew very large in size and had a row crop farming um, aspect of it as well. So growing feed for the cattle. And really, my, my background just made me intricately aware of all the challenges in, on real world farms and large scale farms and um, and especially all the labor challenges that come along with that. And um, in 2017, I ended up making a move to California and um, joined the Gus team when it was in its infancy. Uh, you know, the machine was still under development very much and joined this team, had a, saw a, a very big opportunity there uh, for, you know, a type of technology that could really help a lot of farmers and um, so did that, and here I am today. So very excited. Yeah, like you're saying that uh, your real life experience back home on the dairy and the row crop, you were very aware of what goes on in the egg industry when it comes to uh, labor shortages or just the amount of work that goes into farming. So it's a perfect fit for what you guys have going on at Gus Automation to where where you came from to where you're at today. So let's dive into the show, Gary. You know, to start out, let's just hear a little bit more about kind of who or what is Gus Automation. Sure, yeah, I, I really enjoy telling the story about our background. Um, you know, it's not what most people think of when they hear about an autonomous company out of California. You know, their minds always just race right to, okay, this is Silicon Valley. This is, you know, VC funded, um, group of people that came up with an idea and they're, they're going to try to solve the problems for, for farmers. Right. Um, it's kind of really exactly opposite of that. So our background, the company's founder and CEO is Dave Crinklaw. He has had a farm service business here in California's central Valley. So, located in Kingsburg, just south of Fresno. He's had that business since 1981. Um, So been in it a long time. The majority of that business is a commercial application of um, herbicides, pesticides, fertilizers, fungicides onto trees and vines. So um, very focused on specialty crops. So permanent crops, you know, almonds, pistachios, walnuts, um, wine grapes, uh, those types of crops. So he started that business um, almost for about 40 years ago now. And over the years, just grew it very large. You know, basically started it, uh, two tractors, himself and his father. Um, They were each out there spraying 
20, 40 acres at a time. Really grew the business um, pretty quick after that. His father uh, retired out of it and they just got to the point, Dave got to the point where he was spraying all over the state of California, grew a very large uh, fleet of equipment, 120 some odd sprayers, um, very large crew of people. And his 100% number one challenge was labor, just finding people that wanted to do that type of work. Um, you know, a lot of it's done at nights. Once the temperatures get over about 90, 95 degrees, it goes to nights uh, so that the materials don't lose their effectiveness when they're being applied to the trees and vines. So finding people to do this work, you know, a lot of times it's two to three hours away from home for them. They spray all night long and it's all two miles an hour, you know, very slow, tedious work. And then they, you know, would have to sleep in a, in a motel during the day and then they go spray again at night, often away from home for, you know, a week or two on end. So these challenges really drove Dave to think about, you know, innovating and solving his, his challenge there. And he had thought about having an autonomous sprayer for quite some time. And in 2014, he finally decided to start building it and went out in the shop and drew on the shop floor what he thought the world's first autonomous orchard sprayer ought to look like and and uh, got his team to start uh, fabricating it and really had no clue how to automate the machine at that time, um, but knew he had to start with a platform. So built the platform and then set off onto uh, a three-year path to try to get it to drive itself. So took till about 2017 um, to get it to that point where we could send it down a tree row, have it make its own turn, come back down the tree row. Uh, very challenging when you're dealing with an orchard because the tree canopy blocks GPS signal to the machine. Uh, so there was a lot of other sensors used. There was, um, you know, software developed to help it to drive down the orchard to center down those tree rows with the lack of GPS signal. And then when we got to that point, we started calling our customers in, in that farm service business and asked them, you know, if they'd be okay with us bringing these machines out on their next spray. Uh, overwhelmingly, they said, yes, bring them out. We need this kind of stuff in agriculture. Uh, so that's what we did. And we started commercially spraying with the first handful of units that we had built. And that was a big turning point for us because it really allowed us to start uh, fine-tuning the machine, continuing our R&D, um, you know, just improving the whole process. So it's, it's one thing to have a machine drive itself uh, down a field. It's a whole nother thing to have it perform the job, and in our case, the application in the, in the trees um, to a very high level and very efficiently. So that's what we did. We started really um, uh, hitting it hard commercial spraying and took it to the first World Ag Expo in 2018 and debuted it to the world. And at that show, we had an overwhelming response from growers that said, wow, this is great. You know, how much? I want to buy one. And at the time, we weren't, we weren't selling them. This was just something we developed for our own use. Uh, but it really got us thinking about you know, getting into outside sales and starting manufacturing and all that. So, so we set that plan in motion, built a new facility in Kingsburg uh, to manufacture the gust sprayers out of and moved into it in 2000, uh, about summer of 2019, started manufacturing, been producing uh, one machine a week ever since. And uh, currently we have about 113 units out in the field. Um, spread between California, Arizona, Florida, and um, Australia, and soon to be expanding up into Washington and Oregon, which we're super excited about. That is a really cool story to hear, Gary. It's, again, taking a, a real-world situation, something that that you guys were dealing with in the application world of, of not being able to have uh, or having labor shortages, I should say, and, and just all that goes into it. And it, it is a real situation in all of agriculture, whether it's specialty crops that, that you guys are dealing with there on the West coast or, 
or even uh, standard commodity crops or or dairies or um, uh, hog facilities. Their labor shortages are a real thing. So it it is so awesome to hear how that all began and where it's come to today. Now. I want to dive in a little bit more on these sprayers themselves. Let's just start out. So you obviously said one of the one of the major benefits, of course, is labor. Dealing with labor shortages, this is completely autonomous once you set that sprayer in motion. So let's talk a little bit more about the the overall benefits of running an automated sprayer like this. Yeah, I'd love to. So essentially what you'll have when you go to spray a farm you're going to have one um, operator that monitors the sprayers from a pickup truck. So he or she'll sit in that truck. They'll have a laptop computer in there with the Gus user interface on it. From that pickup, he can monitor uh, between four and eight machines at a time. So just super labor efficient. So we do want to have that guy field side uh, Essentially, the reasoning for that is that he can kind of control the whole show. He's kind of playing quarterback. He's telling um, the sprayers which rows um, each of them should spray. Uh, he's also monitoring everything that's happening. So there's telematics from the sprayers that go um, send data back to his laptop. And anything that's going on with that sprayer is going to be displayed there on that laptop. If there's any problem whatsoever, let's say one of the engines had a high temperature or the flow rate of the material you're applying to the trees, it's supposed to be at 100 gallons per acre and it drops down to 75 gallons per acre, it's gonna report those problems to you. The sprayer on his laptop's gonna flash, it's gonna do an audible alert, he can click on that machine and his eyes will immediately go to like a yellow or red bar indicating where the problem is. So very efficient labor wise. Uh, the other big benefit of Gus is just the precision aspect. So you really get away from a lot of the operator error in specialty crop and trees and vines. It's very crucial. The speed that you drive at when you're applying the chemicals and products to those trees and vines. So very slow speeds, you're allowing enough time for the airflow from the fan to really create a lot of turbulence over the leaves, flip them around so that all sides of it can be coated with the materials you're applying. If you need to do that spray at two miles an hour, that's where you need to stay all day long. And it is a constant challenge with tractor drivers to keep them driving at that slow of a speed, um, especially, you know, as, as, fatigue sets in or you know if they're trying to get home or get to lunch or something like that so the machines though they really don't care uh you set them for two miles an hour they're going to do that all day all night um, they spray the correct amount of material they turn the spray on and off at the correct time when they exit a row make it their turn and then come back into the next row so everything's just extremely precise and it's all being recorded um, while the machine's out there working. So at the end of an application, the grower can download that um, spray log, and then they'll have all that information for their for their records. Those are all awesome benefits or major benefits to using automated sprayers. I would also imagine there's a sense of safety that goes into it, not having an operator actually on each sprayer. Yes, that's a that's a big point that you hit on right there. So uh, there is obviously the chemical aspect of what we're doing, and there's so many precautions that need to be taken when you're using tractor drivers um, to apply these products. You know, it's all the PPE that they have to wear. Um, at times, there's blood testing, depending on what type of products you're spraying, just to make sure that there isn't um, an exposure happening to that um, operator. Gus gets away from all of that. You know, there's no person physically on the machine. It's going out there. It's spraying on its own. Um, so really helping to promote employee safety. Also upskilling employees. So instead of them, you know, on the tractor driving two miles an hour all night long, they can be in that pickup monitoring, you know, four, six, eight of these machines at a time and uh, really just learning a new skill. Uh, it is important to note too that the user interface in this whole system was created to be extremely user-friendly. Uh, 
the vast majority of the customers we set up, we take their existing spray guys. So a guy that was driving a tractor and we say, okay, let's, let's use him and teach him the program. And pretty soon after a few hours, you know, he's running multiple machines on his own. That leads me right into the next question. You talked about one operator or, or one field manager, sprayer manager, whatever they want to call them, can operate multiple machines. The user interface is very user friendly. Let's just talk, Gary, you know, start to finish. If I were to buy a Gus sprayer, what does it look like? How do I get that set up to where it is spraying in a field? What does that process look like? So it's a three-step process. The first time you're going to spray a field, you need to build a map of that field. So utilizing that computer with the user interface on it, you're going to open up the satellite image of that field. It's essentially just like a Google Earth image. And then you're going to mark the boundaries with your the mouse. You're just going to click on the corners of the field. And then it's going to ask you what the row spacing is. So uh, if it's 10 feet or 20 feet, whatever it is, you type that in hit enter, it builds a grid across the whole field with a driving line at that spacing. Um, so 10 feet, you know, it'll be a driving line every 10 feet across the whole field. At that point, uh, you just got to go out to the field. You're going to have your machines. Uh, I should say as well that that mapping process is a one-time thing. You do it once for the life of the orchard or vineyard. Once you save it, you've got it. Uh, right up until you push the trees out, you know, one day in the future, and then you go to replant. So the next thing you're going to do is you're going to calibrate all the sprayers. So on the laptop, um, you're going to basically set what speed you want them to drive at, what engine RPM. You're going to set the pump pressure you want to run and the flow rate of the material. So whether it's 100 gallons an acre, 200 gallons an acre, whatever that is, you just type those values in and then that sprayer knows exactly what it needs to do. Lastly, you just assign routes to each sprayer. So if you have four sprayers, for example, um, on one field, you can tell the first sprayer to spray the first 30 rows of the field, the second sprayer to spray rows 31 to 60, and so on. Then you just hit enter, and they all go on their routes, and they spray on their own. At that point, the operator, he's simply there for monitoring purposes, uh, any machine has any issue, he can pause it, he can drive over to the machine, he can check filters, he can unplug nozzles, that sort of thing. You talk about a very user-friendly user interface, simple. There's a lot of technology out there that is not automation and it's not the level of application or, or tasks that you guys are doing, but the process that you guys have to set that up to get those sprayers moving definitely seems user-friendly, straight to the point, and very, very easy, very simple to do. And like you were saying, once you map that field the first time, you don't have to map it again unless something changes physically in that field. So it sounds like a very, very nice setup, very easy to use and very user friendly. Now, I know you guys are are just getting going with the outside sales, getting these sprayers out throughout the United States and, and I would imagine even throughout the world. And actually, you said that you have some in Australia. Is there any sort of a success story that you'd like to share with us in in the process of getting Gus out there? Yeah, I'd love to. So when we started Gus, um, again, it was we we have the largest commercial application company in California. Um, so right off the bat, you know, we we said we need to have one guy watching eight of these things. You know, just be as as efficient as all possible. So then later down the road, we decide to start selling them, and immediately you think, okay, this is going to be the big farmers. You know, the huge acreage guys, the corporate farms. Uh, the investment farms, they're going to be the ones all over this because, you know, they have the capital, they have the acreage to be able to do the same kind of efficiency that we were doing. What we've actually done, so those kind of are really no-brainer type um, customers, I would say. What we've actually done is filtered down to the smaller growers. And a success story that I'd like to share, we had early on, 
was uh, a guy that came to us and he has almonds, walnuts, pistachios. And he said, yeah, I'd love to buy one of your sprayers. Well, at the time, we had only sold groups of four, eight, ten, you know, multiple machines. And it kind of set me back a little bit. I said, really, you're going to buy one? Because um, at this point, everyone had told us at least, well, it doesn't make sense to buy one because you still have to have the guy at the field side monitoring the thing. He might as well be on the tractor. Well, this guy opened our eyes. He said, yeah, I'm going to have one. And while Gus is out spraying, I'm going to have my pickup truck with the laptop computer inside and a bubble trailer hooked up to my pickup truck. And I'm going to go over to the pump and I'm going to fill the bubble trailer, mix my materials into it, drive back to where Gus is spraying. And then when Gus pulls up for its refill, I'm right there to load it. It'll take me three to five minutes to load it. And then I hit resume and spraying again. He said, right now, I'm an owner-operator on my sprayer, and as soon as I spray my load out, I go as fast as I can back to the pump with the tractor. I mix into my sprayer, and then I, by the time I get back to the field, it's minimum 45 minutes for that process to mix and get back to spraying again. He said, with Gus, I'm going to be able to do it you know, three to five minutes. Right there, I'm doubling my acreage every night. So that was kind of one of those eye-opener moments for us that was like, wow, you know, there's, there's really a lot to this, even for the smaller scale farmers. I really like that story because that just goes to show the world of automated agriculture is not just for large operations or, or large service providers, even a, a simple owner operator, a one man show, a two man show can make sense of an automated sprayer. So that is really awesome to hear. Now, Gary, if somebody wants to learn more about the Gus Automation Sprayers, where can they go? Who can they talk to? Sure. So gusag.com, G-U-S-S-A-G.com. That's our website. Um, My name is Gary Thompson, as you know. So um, my email is gt at gusag.com so you can reach out to me Uh, but also we are very excited to uh, pick up rdo equipment as one of our dealers um, in washington and oregon that's an area we're going to really be pushing into um, in a big way this winter and next spring we developed a smaller version of our machine recently we call it mini gus and uh, predominantly we we made that machine for the market in the Pacific Northwest. So apples grow in high density. Uh, you know, we had a lot of interest from growers up there that said, man, Gus looks great, but it's too big for, for my apple orchard. Can you build something smaller? So that's what we did. We built mini Gus. It'll fit very nicely um, in that type of orchard. It also happens to be a great fit for vineyards. Um, so lots of vineyards, obviously, in California and and the Pacific Northwest. So um, super excited to be launching that machine next spring. There you go. Solutions for operations of all sizes as well as different crops. So I just want to thank you, Gary, for taking the time to sit down with me and talk about the Gus automated sprayers. It is awesome technology. Very neat to hear the background and how it got started. So thanks again for sharing that with us. Yeah, thank you. I've enjoyed this time. Thanks for tuning in to another episode. If you have questions about the technology and products discussed or have ideas about future episodes, please leave them in the comments below. You can also subscribe to RDO's YouTube channel and be in the know about each episode or tune in on any streaming service. Thanks for listening.